Hello and welcome to Camp Reviews. I found a selection of some really old early work which I shot some 20 years ago, some 10 years ago. And I thought I'd just show you and discuss a little bit of information behind each little publication. Um, this is for Capgemini, this is 97. This is for Moose Golf Leisure, 2005. This is 2001 Mint Magazine. And this is Schneider Foreign Exchange, I think roughly around 2008. Maybe, yeah, by 2008, 2009. So, yeah, I'll have a look at them. This is quite a special one. And I didn't realize I still had it and it was stuffed inside um, my, on my bookshelf. This was one of the first covers, the corporate covers I ever had. And this marked the beginning of a long-term relationship with this company. It's amazing that in, in my life as a photographer, you go around um, clients, you go around um, newspapers, trying to get work with a portfolio, you're knocking on doors. And in the early days, when I first moved to London, I just sent some CVs out. And because I didn't have the money at the time uh, to do loads of cards, because cards and stuff were really expensive then. And I was working on a building site and I was assisting, I was doing all sorts of bits and bobs. And I sent my CV out and apparently this company were looking for a photographer and my CV fell out of the cupboard and it landed on the floor and the guy picked it up and it was a photographer and it was me, it was my CV. And he rang me and said, look, I need a photographer, your, literally your CV fell out of the cupboard, can you shoot this job first thing in the morning? And I went, yeah, okay. And being a little bit naive, I, um, I, I didn't prep that well and I just turned up in the morning and I only had one roll of film and in them days, 36 exposures to do a cover was not a great, got a great um, thing to be, um, to, thing to be considering. And yeah, I, so I, I, this guy had just flown in from America. We were around Soho and Shaftesbury Avenue. I had 36 frames to get a shot. And I sort of got it. I think uh, this is nice. I've always remembered this first shot. And this was my first corporate cover. I was still assisting at Magnum, I was still working, juggling the building site, and I was doing the odd job, and this is where it all started. And roughly, um, this is where my corporate, really, my corporate world began. And I worked with Cap Gemini until I changed my um, type of photography until about 2014. And I was one of their, I regular work for 18, 19 years as their photographer. And I thank them for so much. They've kept me gainfully employed and I've covered so many things with them. Anyway, so, you know, there's, all, there's, there's no hard and fast way to promote yourself. You've just got to get yourself out there somewhere. And literally, my 18 years worth of work came along my way just because my, um, my CV fell on the floor. And... There's the other shot I did there. And then I had to go in the boardroom. And bearing in mind, I am literally on one roll of foam here. And I had to really bluff it. One roll of foam. I'll never forget that. And um, good job it wasn't black and white. I just didn't prep. And then it really taught me some lessons. So, yeah, that's my first ever corporate shoot. I think it's about... I think it's something to do with Walter Stewart consulting with the Metro unit who's processing in the year of transformation at Cap Gemini's London office experiences British culture as he stops at newsstand near Cap Gem Cap's Gemini's Shaftesbury Avenue office. I worked in that office for years. I remember one shoot I did in, in, in this reception and I had to photograph a chief executive at the reception and I had a whole load of Mets flash guns and they were all wired up. And about 10 minutes before he was due to come in, I tripped on the wires and every flash gun just landed on the floor. It was horrific. I was very lucky I still managed to, um, to get the shot. But anyway, yeah, so that's what you can do with one roll of foam. I was very lucky that day. I panicked and kept it together 
and um, this is this stuff's not me. This is um, something in New Tarrytown in New York. This is not my thing, but it's a quite a nice style um, magazine. You know, I've never looked at it for such a long time. It's got some really good reportage style imagery in. And 97 was a good period for, for photography and it wasn't, um, it wasn't, you know, there were still budgets out there, there were still people wanting to pay you good fees and pay you for your, for your, for your work, you know, and it was, it was a great time. So yeah, what you could do in one roll of film on a corporate assignment. The next one is 2005, spring, summer, uh, moose, golf and leisure clothing. I shot this with um, Carl Jones Design. It says here Golden Haze. It might be a f photograph from another photographer in here. I would guess it would be the product stuff. Carl Jones Design, who I worked with for a long time, doing some really fun projects. He's based up in Shrewsbury, and we worked together on this. Um, I'm not sure if Moose Golf Clothing is still going, but anyway, I would. Yeah, this is. These are not mine, so I presume that's this guy. Um, Keith. Anyway, I had a lot of fun shooting this. We did it in, I think we did it in a day. The model, we had models, and then we had this guy. Um, this, oh, he's not here yet. We had one male model. Oh, no, we had a couple. We had a, a different people, but we had one proper male model and a couple of clients and stuff like that um, to, to help fill the girl's role. I don't think we had any professional girl models. Um, maybe she was, but these weren't. These were just friends of cars and the client so we had to make up some we had to illustrate the clothing and in and, and, and a contemporary way at the time lots of change of depth of field we wanted to focus on the um, we wanted to focus on the clothing and when we I remember getting there on the on the, on the morning and the weather forecast wasn't sunny and it, everybody was really disappointed we had this sort of grey cloud, and I was really happy because the, the, the diffused light was gorgeous, and I, I could see if I could get the right depth of field at a good, you know, 2.8, that would make some great pictures that day. And as the day progressed, it actually did get brighter, not darker, and it worked. And later on in the day, we got we were able to round off the shoot with stuff like this, where you can see the silhouette of the golfer. And I think even this shot here was getting on to later in the day. But overall, just having a lovely diffused light. I didn't use a reflector. Now and later on, I would have used a reflector to maybe enhance that a little bit. But at the time, I didn't use um, any reflectors. Well, I did, but I just didn't use them on this shoot. I think they were in the car and I just didn't get them out because I actually thought the light was quite shadowless and there was a lot of lovely evenness on the face. And this grey, beautiful light was just lovely. So just this was the sort of style of the day and we tried to um, emphasise this in as many of the shots as we, as we could, uh, dropping out the depth of field. It was becoming sunnier here, but this was later on in the day. Again, playing with the depth of field, just trying to create some sort of slickness to it. And, and for a one day shoot, you know, th th it's pretty good. It's pretty good. We have to work hard as photographer and earn our money. I have no idea what I was trying to do there. That was probably Carl getting them on the floor, getting them on a, getting them something abstract. Um, again, just re, re changing costume all the time and reshooting the same scenario and trying to sort of emphasise um, them in uh, them playing a the game. I don't think any of the girls could play golf, to be honest. Again, in some scenario where they reading the card. I think it's a pretty nice day's work, this. We worked hard. I think he was a client. He wasn't a model. This is our model. This is early on in the day. You can see that greyness and the sort of shifting between the sun coming out and there's a sort of lovely greyness. He is really easy to photograph. He, what was he called? Because uh, photography location embroidery models Philip, Debbie, Karen, Suzanne, John and Tim I don't know who it is but he played for he was a rugby league player he's really strong and muscular and um, and he 
he was a rugby league player for Warrington or Witness or something like that. He's a nice guy, he's a lovely guy. I remember having dinner with him. Sorry, I remember having um, our lunch together through the day and we got this, um, he was on such a, obviously he's in the middle of training and stuff and, and we had this big Sunday roast for our lunch and um, I'm eating everything. I'm eating the gravy, the fat on the meat, everything else you put in. I remember he trimmed all the fat off the meat and he, he didn't have any gravy. He was just like a strict dry meal he had. And um, it was really interesting how how our, diff our diets um, were different, but obviously um, he was a sportsman and I'm not. But anyway, I'm an artistic photographer. Um, so again, depth of field, we're using depth of field there, if you can see, using that to sort of, and that, that was one of my favorite shots. I had that in my portfolio for a while. Uh, it's very easy to photograph this guy. Really nice, easy. You know, just trying to capture, again, the man's side of it and doing his um, going on a round of golf together. And one of the hardest shots of the day was, if I can find it, Why have I not got it? Yeah. No, there was a shot with... Ah, uh, no. Hmm. There was a shot where... There was this sort of shot and we had to get the girl. That's it. How did I just bypass that before? That was like the hardest shot of the day, that. And by this was something like five o'clock. And it was just, we were so exhausted and we were just trying to get the shot right and the angles right. It was getting windy. The sun kept going in and it kept me caught behind the clouds and just to get the perspective right and getting everything. And we tried a few shots there when it was rolling. Anyway, that was an interesting shoot. Um, Mint magazine. This was an interesting shoot. I enjoyed the shoot. Um, it was quite a tough shoot. And it was, I had to do a day with. Um, a girl at Spearmint Rhino stripper, weirdly, and she was a professional dancer, having to work as a stripper um, in the, uh, the Spearmint Club. And I had to spend a day, well, I spent a few hours with her doing some port weights in her changing room. And, um, and they're quite small, but you can give a selection of the, of the shots I did. And, I hadn't realised, like, it was only when I reflected back on the shoot that I'd spent the day, apart from her, surrounded by naked women. And I hadn't even crossed my mind that I'm sitting in, like, this shot here, I'm sitting in a dressing room full of girls, just all naked. And they really, they just let me into the dressing room and I, they were lovely, I got on really well with them all and let me do their job. I wasn't, I was total professional and that way I didn't even, you know, um, I didn't even notice everybody else. In fact, um, I kept, made sure um, um, the, the girl, now who was this, who was this young girl I photographed? Let me just see. Um, let me just, let me see if I can remember. I can't find her name. Uh, Anne Marie, I think. It's Anne Marie. I'm sure it's Anne Marie. Um, anyway, I do apologise, Anne Marie, if this is not you. I'm just. Um, and maybe her name was kept back for the reasons. Well, so yeah, these are these girls are professional dancers, having to make some money. And so you can see I'm in the changing room here. You can see here um, some of the shots are quite suggestive in terms of her dancing and stuff like that and, and some sort of cutaways and her getting made up. Anyway, um, at the end of the shoot, she's such a lovely girl and such an intelligent girl and having to sort of do what she did to make money, and it, it's fair enough, and I had utmost respect for her and attitude. And she came up to me at the end of it, she gave us a big hug and a big kiss, and she went, thank you. She said, 
like I'm one of the only photographers never asked her to just get her boobs out. So every time I think she's been photographed, they just say, get, get your clothes off. And I didn't, I just didn't think it was important to the shoot. And I think she really respected that. She was such a nice girl. And um, I wonder what she's doing now. I hope she's been very successful in what she does. Anyway, so, you know, you get a lot of commissions like that. And um, I remember getting back to the office, which I shared an office in London with um, Jez Coulson and Mark Jackson and, and, and a, a few other people, uh, Simon Clark and, and, and all of us. And I remember getting back and the boys, some of the boys were like, God, what was it like? Did you, did you see, like, what was it like? There was a loads of naked women. I went, do you know what? I can't remember. And I really couldn't remember. All I did was focus on her and getting the shoot. And I think this was commissioned by Bev Stevenson, um, who was the editor of The Crack, who I work with up in Newcastle quite a bit. That was a magazine in Newcastle. The last one, um, this was a tricky job, I tell you. This was a lovely corporate job. So you can see how my corporate work has changed um, in 20 years, I guess, 2007. Oh no, 10 years, about 12 years difference between that and that. So this was sort of more up to date. Um, basically Schneider Foreign Exchange based themselves near um, the Bank of England. And what they wanted was this, this report doing, and they wanted some generic shots of the square mile, the, um, the, the square mile, whatever it is, the ring of steel or whatever it is where the city's incorporated in, and they wanted some shots. Easier said than done, letting a man walk around with a camera isn't the easiest thing to do when you're surrounded by lots of security guards, overzealous facility people, people who think they know the law by taking pictures in front of, the, in front of their buildings on the public highway. It was a nightmare. And to be honest, I got on with it. I didn't hassle Schneider at all. I didn't get anybody to come out with me. They give me, they budgeted for like a 10 day shoot and in the 10 days, I would go out and I had to get this report. And that's what used to happen when you get jobs like this, because you couldn't sort of quantify a time period to do it. So you'd get, you'd work on a budget and you'd have to, you'd, you'd work on a budget based on a shooting fee per day, plus a, 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 a buyout or whatever you want to call it. I didn't buy out this, but I kept the, the copyright, but I give them full exclusive rights and they paid good money for it. But what I had to do is, I think in 10 days I had to shoot this. And I shot a lot more. I had to go and make my own way to the city at certain days when it was light. I wanted certain light. So it took about two months to shoot. And I was just there with one camera, two lenses, and that's it. And um, I was around Liverpool Street, all around St Paul's, all the way around Moorgate, the Bank of England, um, the, the Guardian Royal Exchange, up up all around that area, Barbican, just trying to capture um, something which represented the city, which represented that area of banking. And um, yeah, so this is some of the shots. Um, this is just outside the Guardian Royal Exchange and using the daylight. There's nothing in post-production on this. Um, it's weird when I went to shoot that, it was right outside the Guardian Royal, next to the Bank of England. It was one of them days, it was so hot, I was looking I'd been out shooting for like five or six hours. I was hot, I was sweaty, I looked a mess. And around this statue were lots of little girls from a school, like a sort of private school, having a picnic. And um, they're all in their little straw hats and their little, um, little blue dresses and everything. And I knew I had to get this shot. And I saw the aeroplane coming over and I was shooting a project, which I might show you a bit later, on contrails. I've done a little series on contrails. And, and, and I knew I had to get it, and I had to make a decision. I had to walk right in the middle of all these little girls um, eating, their, eating their sandwiches for the lunch and lie on the ground and shoot this. And I had to do it so I didn't look as undodgy as possible. And I just did it, and I knew it was a chance, and the plane was sort of, when I first went in, it was there. And I had to get it, and I, I remember getting down on the floor, surrounded by all these little girls, and I remember just shooting it, and it got over there, it got over there, and it got over there, and I went the whole line, then moved my camera. I knew I had the exposure right, because I got that before I lay on the floor. I just thought, I've got to get it framed. I've got the framing right, and I knew I had to get the contrail cutting across. And um, I just, I did it, I, and, and everybody just stood in suspended animation while I shot it. They knew I wasn't doing anything dodgy. 
And then um, I stood up and I winked at the teacher and she just looked at me. She didn't get any reflection. And they knew and I just walked away. I think they understood I was doing something. And, um, but to be honest, I never looked like a professional photographer. I did look like some tourist. I looked like some dodgy tourist because I couldn't carry a lot of kit. I just never really wanted to. Anyway, this was a sort of Magnum inspired shot, which I'd saw these, the, the light in and out the tunnel uh, and under this sort of, not a tunnel, but underneath a building. And I, I could see the light and I, I was intrigued by the shadow. So I spent about four, three, four hours just trying to, trying to get this shot. Anyway, I'll just run through some of the shots. That's the Bank of England. That's very much, they wanted quite an abstract feel. I was very much into shooting um, into the light. I love, and I still shoot around this sort of lighting now. I'm just trying to get a feel. It was all shot on 35 mil style digital. Uh, so there's a little bit of a crop on that. Um, not the easiest thing building to shoot this, but they wanted something which sandwiched it and brought it together. And I knew they were gonna like, well, I think half torn it out. And so I like the perspective on that, but it's not the easiest shot. It's not the easiest thing to shoot, and especially when there was people sort of questioning what I was trying to do in that area and shoot. Uh, this is the Guardian Royal Exchange. I shot a lot of stuff in here with Peter Marlowe for, for like um, Fortune magazine and stuff like that years ago. So I'd already been in there. And I think I did the Guardian Royal annual report as well with Peter Marlowe, um, which was quite eventful, I have to say only on their part, not Peter's part, um, just anyway. So I'm really proud of this shot and it's really tiny. I've got it on stock somewhere, but it's the gherkin and the reflection. It's not a composite, it's all one shot. I was really chuffed with that shot. They're very small in this, which I'm not mega chuffed at. Uh, Change Alley, which is um, part of the city and it's like, there's lots of little nooks and crannies around the city and that was a rather dull day, but I needed to get this alleyway and I'd been trying to get it. And it's quite hard on a, on a sunny day to get movement because of the exposure latitude. So I went on a sort of duller day where I'd get a longer shutter speed with a good ISO and I was able to sort of get the movement in there. Um, this shot, um, I, I was really proud of this shot. Um, I knew I needed a sort of money shot. I knew I needed a shot, a double pager, but I knew I needed something which would really make the whole thing. And as I'm always prepared, I'm always ready to do it. And um, I remember, I'm, I've always been intrigued by the light on the Thames, and I'm sure some of you who've been, who listen to this, who know the Thames and know central London, know on the morning and then on about five o'clock, the light can be absolutely incredible. It's stunning. And um, I was in the middle, I think I just shot a Guardian job, and I was coming back along the embankment, and I lived in, um, I lived in, in Tulse Hill, Dulwich Way. So I was coming back down the embankment to cut over to Vauxhall Bridge to go down through Vauxhall and up towards um, Camberwell and Brixton and places like that. And um, I remember the light was incredible. And I was coming along just before, as you're gonna hit Westminster. And um, uh, I, I could, um, I saw the, the light and the silhouette and everything. And I was, I was literally on the side of the, I was the north side of the embankment. And I think I was coming down from Blackfriars Way. Correct me if I'm wrong. And um, I remember just seeing the silhouettes briefly and I thought, I've got, this is a shot. Luckily, I had a 180 mil lens strapped to my camera. And um, I jumped out on the embankment. I just stopped the car, jumped out and I risked a major fine. I mean, I would have paid fine 60 quid on the spot if the cops had stopped me or a camera, and I, and I just thought it's worth the shot. And I whacked off a few frames, and then I saw these birds coming over. I don't know if you can see it. I saw these, the, the birds and everything. And um, I remember seeing the birds and I went back, and I, I went back and I framed it all up again. And then I sort of got it with the birds. And I sort of think that added to it. I got in my car, didn't get a ticket, and I feel I got the shot, which sort of, um, brought the whole process together. Um, and once I knew I had that as an anchor shot, um, I, was, I was like mega chuffed. I think that is, um, in the situation of that, is that Westminster Bridge? I, I definitely know side the, the, the embankment. I'm just trying to work out in perspective to where I was on that. Somebody could give me an idea, I can't remember where I was, but I was definitely north side of the um, embankment. That's Big Ben, isn't it? So I definitely was north side, yeah. Um, again, that was a dull day, 
along Change Alley, whatever it's called. Uh, Paul Julius Reuter, really famous person in um, with, with the Reuters and communication and in the city and a, a sort of fitting into the intelligent brief. Guardian Royal, they wanted some stuff, you know, just some abstract sort of uh, identifiers for the, for, the, for the shoot and things which identified the area, as did... Um, as did that, it was the Bank of England up there and, um, and you know, the Guardian Royal Exchange and stuff and getting this sort of stuff, simple sort of shots. Do you know, I got a lot more than I've got what's in here. I got some really, uh, some shots where I just, I'd really sort of chuffed with myself and I, I use for my other stuff, my other promotion and stuff like that, but they, they've got the full use of them, but they didn't put them in this bush. So I've got a lot more, hell of a lot of stuff I got from this issue. It was really fun. I'm, all, I'm up for more commissions if anybody wants to commission me. Um, and that's sort of, I think, Bank of England thingy. This, um, I shot, this is St Paul's, and I remember that I want, they wanted a shot with St Paul's in it, and it took me ages to get an abstract shot of that. And I, I think I was at the Millennium, is it the Millennium Bridge? Is it that, what that bridge is, which you walk over the Thames from the Tate to the, the thing? I'm absolutely rubbish with names. But that walkway thing, and, and this is in line with it. I remember walking from there trying to get a shot, and there's some arches or something, or some artwork or something, and the sun was just right, and I managed to get the sort of shadow detail under the arch to, to get that. So it comes out quite nicely. Um, it's, a, it's a nice little artistic... I was really chuffed with that, you know? It, it, these things do take time to shoot, and there was a lot of problems shooting it with security because everybody in the in the capital was a little bit um, paranoid about security at the time. Just going to see if I can focus on that. So that's some other stuff. I got that um, uh, rush hour sign there. That was outside Buckingham Palace. Another lie and a signifier, like an identifier, international exchange. I think that was a clock down near Moorgate. So a lot of sort of significant um, uh, uh, things. It's got a lovely textured feel. It's all like imprinted in. So yeah, thank you Schneider. That was um, really good. And um, yeah, I enjoyed that. So if I find some more, I'll give you a quick little insight into my work of past and some near the future and let you have a look. Um, thank you very much.